I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I actually sat through all three of the Fifty Shades movies and it's finally over. And the best part is I never gave my money to a single one of these movies. I am a champion. I am a champion! <laughs> This is 20 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Fifty Shades Freed. It's over. After this, I don't have to review any more of these movies. I can't believe it. I'm so ready. Oh, let's get this over with. So Fifty Shades Freed is directed by James Foley, who also directed Fifty Shades Darker, and the film, of course, stars Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson. So Fifty Shades Free tells the story of Christian and Anna. They are now officially married. They're enjoying having sex. You know, life is going good for them until Anastasia's boss from Fifty Shades Darker threatens their relationship. So when it comes to these movies, if you've seen my review for the first film, if you've seen my review for the second film, you know I cannot stand the first two movies. Now for those that are a fan of these movies, that's awesome. Two thumbs up, I am not judging anyone. Everyone does have their own opinions. Movies are made for different demographics. Obviously, I'm not the demographic for these movies, but yeah, for those that do like these movies, that is awesome, more power to you. I am just not a fan of these movies, so with Fifty Shades Free, you can already tell at this point, I was not looking forward to this film. I was dreading it, but all of these films, keep in mind, I do go with them in an open mind. I don't go in these movies and just hope to just hate them, like, oh, I'm so ready to hate this movie, let's go. No, I'm not like that. I do want these movies to be good. I really do want these movies to be good. I'm rooting for these movies to not be trash. This final installment, uh, as much as I was draining it, I was rooting for it to not be trash. If it was at least okay, I would have been perfectly fine with that because at least it's not something painful to watch. At least it's stepping up its game, even if it's a little bit. And with Fifty Shades Freed, I still feel it's trash. Nothing has changed with this goddamn trilogy. Now, if this installment pleases the fans of these films, then that's awesome. For me, I still feel like even as a conclusion, even when it tries to be quote unquote satisfying, it is still really bad. It still goes in the wrong direction. I. I hated this movie as much as I honestly hated the first two movies. Now, as much as I do hate these movies, I'm not going to sit here and pretend there's no positives to them. I'm not going to just trash on it. There's a few, just like with the first two. Dakota Johnson is still good. Anastasia is still not a good character, but Dakota Johnson, her performance, in my opinion, was still good. She's easily the best performance in all three of these movies, and I'm honestly amazed with the amount of poor dialogue she has given. She is still able to act pretty well on screen. I'm honestly still impressed with how well she acts in all three of these movies. Cinematography looks good here, too. I will say the movie is well shot. Once in a while, it's well directed by James Foley. That's once in a while. And the movie, surprisingly, when it attempted at humor, there were two or three times where I actually laughed. I'm not gonna lie. And it's not like unintentionally funny. Like, there's a couple of times where they attempted at humor that I actually laughed at. Like, they introduced this bodyguard character, and this bodyguard actually made me laugh a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie. And that's it for this movie. That's it. This movie, though. This movie. This movie. Oh my god. It's still stupid. Now, I'm gonna say, 
When it comes to the first film and the second film in this film, between all three of these films, Fifty Shades Darker has the most stupid stuff. Most of the stupid situations happen in Darker. Freed, surprisingly, doesn't have as many stupid moments as Darker, but it's still dumb. It's still a rinse and repeat movie. There's still nothing that has changed here. It's Christian and Anna getting married in the opening scene uh, with Haley Steinfeld's new song, Capital Letters, playing on it, which I'll admit, that's maybe the only song uh, in the soundtrack I actually like. In terms of, like, new songs, that's maybe the only song I liked in the soundtrack. But it's them getting married, and you can expect it. There's tons of sex, including one with an ice cream, one scene dealing with ice cream that... I'm never going to look past. That's forever ingrained in my mind, unfortunately. That's really what the majority of the film is. It's them arguing. It's them having sex. That's all there really is to it. Oh, yeah, and of course, this dumb subplot dealing with Anastasia's boss. You know, the one that was absolutely crazy and darker. He wants to threaten their relationship and all that. So you are dealing with that at least once in a while. And it's still just so dumb like these movies really do lack logic there's little to no logic with these films and that does not surprise me but it really just makes me angry that these films don't even try i know these writers are adapting from books which i'll admit i've never read but you know it supposedly has stuff that is not even good so when you're adapting from a book okay you're adapting but as a writer, as a screenwriter for a theatrical release, you could still do something to change it up. You could still add material to make maybe the movie somewhat better than the books. You know, give it something fresh. Um, give it something that isn't unrealistically stupid pretty much from beginning to end. And then just having all this BDSM, it's just so awkward. It's so boring. At my screening for this film, when I was waiting in line, there was this person that has not even seen the first two movies. And I overheard her say to her friends, if she wanted to really watch porn, she could just go online. Why do we need to basically watch porn on screen? Why does that need to be the case? The storytelling is very god-awfully written. The dialogue is very, very painful to listen to. Um, J.D. Dornan is still not good in these movies. He's still wooden as a piece of wood could be. Outside of these films, I do hope Jamie Dornan gives a better performance. I am still waiting for the day I watch him in the movie where he gives a good performance. But in these films, he has not been very good at all. Um, but I am rooting for him to one day give a good performance outside of these movies. The rest of the acting is still really bad. This film plays out like some kind of lifetime movie. I also don't care about the soundtrack. I never cared about the soundtrack for really any of these films. Besides that one Haley Steinfeld song that I did like in this film, I really did not like the rest of the random poppy kind of songs in the soundtrack. And the final act of the film turns into this big action movie because like I said leading up to this climax it's just sex and a ton of arguing and the arguments between Anastasia and um, Christian I just don't care about his behavior is still so immature and Anastasia to her credit there's at least a few times where Anastasia is actually standing up to herself I forgot to mention that too in the positives when she's actually standing up for herself a few times I'll give her credit that was actually very cool, but she still sticks with this guy. So I don't know if those few times she does stand up for herself is something to really praise because she still is sticking with this guy. After all the stuff that he has done to her, especially when she gets traumatized with the whole BDSM, like how do you stay with a guy this long? I will never understand that in a million years. And James Foley's direction is just really 
flat. The editing's really choppy too. And you can predict where the film is gonna go. It's not hard to predict where they're gonna go with this film. And the drama that they try to add with Jamie Dornan without spoiling anything, you know, out of respect for those that actually do care for these movies. There is drama that goes on on Christian's side of the story, but when they still try to throw in that drama, I'm, I don't care. I don't care, and that's due to because I really don't care about Christian. After everything he's gone through for the duration of these three movies, you would think I would care, and I really don't. Like, this movie has a nice ending, but in order for me to care about this nice ending, I'm supposed to care about the characters. You would think by now, even if I don't like these characters from the start of the trilogy, you would think maybe by the end, I would have some sort of attachment to them. But I don't and because of that I can't get attached to that nice ending that this movie tries to give I know my audience at my screening was awing, but I wasn't because I did not give a about these characters from the very beginning. I really don't. I don't care about their relationship. I don't care about their sex life. I don't care about anything. I don't care about their arguments. Anastasia, when she does try to stand up for herself a few times, it's still pretty pointless because she still sticks with this guy. <sighs> yeah, oh my God. And just like I said, the stuff with her boss from the previous film is just so stupid. Just, oh my God, dude, really? I can't take it anymore. I'm glad I'm done with this trilogy. Um, I try to be open-minded with all three of them. I really try not to be that person that goes, oh yeah, I'm ready to hate this because I don't believe in that. I believe in trying to go into every movie with an open mind no matter how bad the marketing may be or how bad the material may look. I believe in going to an open mind. I did it for all three of these movies and even with that, none of these movies have improved. None of them. And it pisses me off, honestly. I am just really glad this is over because I've had enough of this. I don't want any more of this. So overall, Fifty Shades Freed is god awful just like the first two it is still really boring it is still really painful it is it still has god awful writing really flat direction you don't really give a shit about christian gray and anastasia's relationship by the end of it at least i most certainly didn't um and while i am happy that it's over and i don't have to put up with watching these movies and reviewing them the fact that they never improved really is an embarrassment i'm honestly embarrassed with all three of these movies Movies. This is no doubt one of the worst movies of 2018. Oh yeah, and I saw this movie in IMAX. My screening for this film was in IMAX. So yeah, I definitely didn't miss the climax in that glorious IMAX screen. Cause oh boy, that was so much fun. Fifty Shades Freed gets one out of four stars, just like Fifty Shades of Grey, just like Fifty Shades of Darker. All three of these movies get a big, fat one out of four stars. <sighs> so everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Fifty Shades Freed. What do you think about the Fifty Shades trilogy? Like I said earlier, if you like these movies, that is so awesome. Just for me, I've had enough of it. I really had had enough of it. <sighs> this is 20 to Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power. I'm gonna cheer myself up. I'm gonna go play some PS4 now. Uh -huh.